Okay, today's project is another custom body. This one is a telly, but it is a double humbucker telly, not a standard humbucker telly. The customer wanted his made out of mahogany. This one is obviously ash, but I haven't made the customers yet. So um, I'm just gonna show you this one when we do the intro here. So basically everything's the same, except you cut humbuckers here. Um, do watch yourself if you're going to do this. If you have a pick guard, make sure you measure that out. I don't know that there is a standard for the spacing of uh, these Tele uh, pickup cavities. So measure that out before you make yours. All right, let's get into it. Because this is a custom build again, I can't share the CAD with you. However, I will share the standard uh, Tele you know, single and single telly back here, CAD with you, and you can adjust that CAD as you see fit. That'll at least get you started. Hey, if you find yourself enjoying this kind of content and want to see more, why don't you mash down on that subscribe button. That helps us immeasurably. And then maybe punch the like button and give us a thumbs up and maybe comment and stuff. That helps us bring you more content like this. So please do that, it helps a lot. And now, due in part to the overly litigious society in which we reside, listen to my robot. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, no Will Robinson. Danger. All right, had a customer that wanted kind of a custom order. He wanted a telly with two humbuckers, but he wanted it out of mahogany. We don't normally make them out of mahogany, so it was kind of a custom order. Um, well, why don't you just use your, your regular basswood one or something? Well, the speeds and feeds are different for wood. We could use the ash one. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the ash one for this rather than you know, come up with something entirely new. So here we go. Um, let's check the size first. Yeah, 1.75 thick, that all looks good. Um, so let's start with the pickups. And I'll hit the shift key, hold down the shift key while I select the other one so we get both of them. Um, this cut depth is going to be 0.75. Now remember, we're using the ash cutters. Uh, it's the same cutter, but it just has different speeds and feeds. So we can't just select it because it'll kind of confuse the software. So we have to remove that one first and then select one. And like I said, we're just going to use the ash one. It'll be a little slow. The difference between the ash and mahogany one is probably a couple minutes. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I like a conventional cut. I like to ramp those cuts one inch and we will call these pickups. Okay. Next, let's do the control cavity. So we will select control cavity. Again, another pocket. And this one already has the ash one in it, not the basswood. It remembered it from the last one. And these are 1.4 deep. That is usually plenty deep for any switches I have ever used. Um, ramp in the plunge move, we'll call this control cavity. And we'll calculate that. And then of course the last one is simply the neck pocket. That'll also be a pocket. It will not be 1.4. <laughs> it will be 0.625 or 5 ace. It's ash, conventional cut, ramp the plunge moves, neck pocket, and we'll calculate that. And lastly, we'll go over and check out the outer profile. That will be a profile, not a pocket. And it will be 1.75 deep, right, all the way through. It will not be basswood. It will be the ash bit. Okay, so now, and it will not be on the inside. It'll be on the outside because we want this the final dimension. Um, 
will go. You know, I'm going to show you this too. If you ever look like you're missing something here, it's probably because you do not have this show advanced toolpath. See, it shows more uh, stuff that you can do here. I always like that checked because I'm a little scatterbrained, and if it's not there, I won't, you know, remember it. Then I'll go, what's wrong? So here we are outside. Um, again, for this one, I'm not going to add tabs. I'm going to do it when I actually machine it, but uh, for you guys to see it, I'm not going to add the tabs. I am going to add a little ramp there, though, and we're going to smooth, not zigzag, smooth. Okay, and we'll call this outer profile. All right, there we go. <clears throat> now let's take a look at this. We'll reset the preview. We'll preview all the tool paths. We'll double click the stuff outside of the body and since there's no tabs it'll take it away and then we'll kind of take a look at this guy and you can see this stuff here that's just some glitch in the 3d rendering and you look when I move it it gets you know or it may be a half a thou thick or something like that anyhow this is what the guy wants of course I will put the I'll drill the hole in that's not shown the whole Basically, from here to here, it allows you to run a wire between here, and from here to here, allows you to run the wires between there, and the 7 8 inch hole on the outside here. Additionally, the 8 inch roundover is not shown, but all that stuff, you know, will be in there. Those are just secondary ops that I do. Okay, so let's go out, uh, glue up the blank, and um, we'll get the machine of this thing. All right, back at the lumber pile. Mahogany today. So, this guy's right on top. He looks pretty good. Um, looks plenty wide enough to my calculated eye. We'll get him cut into some uh, blanks. Okay, now we got our wood selected. Nice piece of mahogany. We'll cut her to length. <laughs> So the next step will be to joint this edge. You can see it's got all sorts of fuzzies and you can never be able to get a good invisible glue seam with that. So we'll run it through my little tabletop jointer. I have a big long bed jointer for longer pieces, but this one's so short, we'll just run it off this one. very straight edge for invisible glue lines or almost invisible glue lines. All right, here we are at the glue up table. I try to match these as best I can with grain and stuff. Um, use a glue dispenser, tight bond one. Uh, two or three are a little more a water stable, but we have found them to be rubbery um, and have never had a problem with tight bond one. Nice even glue coat. Line these up here, and we always go one clamp on either side. Uh, it gives you a nice clamping, even clamping pressure on both sides. Clamp it down fairly tightly until I just see some glue squishing out, and then we know we're good. So I guess the first thing we should do with this is kind of take off some of these fuzzies and stuff with the orbital. So here we go.
Boy, if you're going to do that, get one of these pads. I'm not really sure who makes them. You can find them on Amazon. They're probably called router pads or router non-slip pads or something like that. It really helps with the uh, not slipping around on there so much. Okay, now we'll use the drum sander and we'll just take off those little itty bitty nubs left from where the tabs were. And if there's anything else around the outside, um, we'll clean those up too. There isn't really usually very much to uh, sand on the outside because those router bits work so well. But here we go. Okay, with the edge done, what we'll do is we'll drill a hole through here for the wire and then drill a hole through here for the wire. I use what's called a bell hangers bit. It's about a foot long. It's three eighths inch in diameter and I just drill right through the, um, the neck pocket through these pockets to here and then like this. So here we go. one and then when I drill this one you want to be really careful that you don't hit the side of your bit here it's a kind of a balancing act between coming in too steep and maybe going out the back of the, the guitar body you don't want to do that or coming in too shallow and you nick this up here so just watch yourself if you're drilling this hole there we go here's the part of the video you guys have been waiting for the part where I give you the free coupon code just uh, go to the link in the description and it'll take you to the file page and check out like normal and when it tries to charge you just put in that coupon code and it'll be free. The only thing that I ask in return is that you subscribe to the channel. Subscription's free also. It doesn't cost you anything. Maybe, you know, a couple, two seconds to click the button wherever it is. Alright, let's get back to the video. Okay, now using the same non-slip mat that we used when we were sanding it, we'll give it the edge treatment. Uh, Tellys normally get an eighth inch round over, and we'll do that with the router just kind of freehand with this little follow bit here. I do want to take a second to kind of explain something that's minor but you need to pay attention to and that's right here and right here I freehand that in there I just kind of ease it in there and I ease it out there because you don't want to round over this edge or this edge because it'll undercut your neck plate that you put on there so I'll just break these by hand with just a piece of sandpaper and I ease this out so that it's a smooth transition or as smooth as I can and that might take five seconds with some sandpaper too. Same up here, but do pay attention to that. All right, now we're at the drill press for the 7 8 inch uh, input jack hole and you can see the fixture down here. It stops it there and it holds it more or less straight up. It does give me a little wiggle room so that I can uh, some of them with veneers or some uh, uh, thin lines and stuff may be a little different so I wanted to build a little wiggle room into that but it holds it pretty good. <laughs> as easy it is to drill that hole. That hole it can be harder to drill if you don't have a drill press and uh, a fixture. Okay, just a quick little 
part here on the hand sanding I do, I always like to break any sharp edges. So we have this edge here, this edge here, this edge all the way around here, and then this edge on the back. So I just have some sanding blocks from scrap that I uh, contact adhesive some 120 grit sandpaper to, and I'll just hit these really light. And then flip her over and get the other side too. Now in my program, you know, I build in this radius here and this radius here, so I don't really have to hit those. So just a touch more uh, hand sanding on this, and then um, the quality control will measure that, and we'll weigh it, and we'll stamp it, and we'll do all that kind of stuff. Uh, then she'll be ready to go out to the customer. All right, after action report, you're going, hey man, you, you made that out of mahogany, why you got that ash one in your hands again? I shipped it before I did this. Or is it more of this? In any case, uh, I'm not the sharpest tool in the you know toolbox. Um, the customer's turned out fantastic. Uh, pretty straightforward. You don't got to flip it over and index anything on the back, anything like that. Again, I know I told you this in the intro, but I'm going to tell you this again in the outro. Uh, if you are using a pick guard for yours, um, measure to make sure that you are putting these uh, humbucking pickup cavities in the right spot. Uh, you may have to move them around a little bit. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, every one that I've ever made was not being used with a pick guard. So. Uh, I took my measurements uh, from a single pick guard that I have. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, in any case, uh, great project, simple as far as guitar bodies go. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you did enjoy it, or even if you didn't, why don't you mash down on the subscribe button, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, share it with some buddies you have that may or uh, be interested in uh, this kind of thing, and that helps us grow the channel. All right, thanks again.